How to create a sort of unusual, surreal, snake-like image in Photoshop. A very basic one in this case. Of course, you can manipulate it in numerous ways. Now, I'm using the gradient. I'm just going to go for the basic gradient there and just go for the colours. Just change the colours up to you, what you want. I'm just going for dark greens. And once you've got that, you can see that. Just go to reset gradients just to get that gradient there. And just apply it. And I'm using it in difference mode, different blending mode of difference, and I'm using mirror as well. That's the style there. Now just apply it a number of times and you can see you can create some interesting, very quick designs like that. So once you've actually got that, and you can obviously create create a variety of things depending on the actual gradient you use. I'm just using like so basic gradient. Now I'm blurring it slightly using the filter menu and blur, Gaussian blur, and then just go to filter and render and lighting effects right once you've actually got that go for spots option there and just create a very very narrow band there of, and you can move it over and you can see all the various settings just make certain the ambience is quite low and maybe move the hot spot up depending on what you want just now it does actually increase it once you actually leave and you can obviously modify the exposure and pushing it up quite high Ambience I keep quite relatively low. I don't want too much. I want to actually basically that sort of light in the centre. And there's the actual spot there. And once you're actually happy with that, just click OK. Right, once you've got that design there, now that's one odd thing. It does it a bit of post-processing to actually create it so it doesn't... Right, I'm going to select that, see, that whole area and I'm going to leave some black there. So I'm not just... So I'm just going to... And then once I've done that, I'm just going to copy that area. I'm going to copy that selection and then I paste it and then just go to filter and liquefy. And once you're in liquefy, you can actually see design. What you can do then, you can actually use the warp at the top and then just drag that over, stretch over, and numerous other tools as well for stretching and manipulating. You can, what I'm trying to do is make it into a sort of snake-like design. So I'm just crushing it in, sort of squeezing it and you've got this obviously this lovely purple design, but you could, of course, it might turn out to be a sort of green colour, whatever, depending on the actual gradients you use. So, once you're happy with that, and you can, of course, use twist, and all, I'm using the forward warp there, click OK, so I've actually got that design there, and you can see, now I'm leaving the other design, I could actually remove the other backlight there, I'm not going to remove it, but, uh, so, once I've actually got that layer, now I'm going to duplicate it, hold the Alt Option key down, and duplicate it. I'm going to rotate it, twist it around, and then and I'm going to duplicate it again. And you can see straight away you've got this sort of snake-like design. A surreal snake. Obviously they don't look like real snakes, or worms, eels, whatever you want to say. Sort of oddball, sort of know, Dave McKean, sort of like weird, sort of Lovecraftian, sort of, I don't know. Something like that. I'm resizing at this point. So, got some there, and just keep redoing that and multiply multiple times, create sort of like weird things. You can position them in different positions, obviously create your effects so you can see them going up and around. I've got a sort of radial around there. Now, you can resize it numerous times. Obviously you don't want to push it too much, you don't want to make it too big, but just you can decrease it, obviously work, maybe scale it down. That's probably this. And then just flatten the image so you've got these all nicely layered. Now at this point you can apply various effects. Now I'm just going to go quickly go to say like filter and oil paint, but you could use blurs and so on and so on. I'm just going to get oil paint and push that up to the max and click there. Do it a number of times. Don't just apply it just once. And you can actually sort of make the, it becomes more like an oil painting like effect. But you can vary, there's a whole range of other filters of course you could use, maybe like blurs at this point. You can also go to adjustments and vibrance, push the vibrance up so you can get a really nice sort of super colourful design there so you can push it, click OK. And you can blur that as well once you're happy with that or whatever you want to do. Or maybe just go back, flatten it back to there again and maybe apply a different effect. So say like blur, Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see this. You don't want to push it up too much. Maybe use masks to actually just blur, blur certain parts. Up to you. Right, I'm just going to go back to that vibrance. And of course, what you can do then, adjustments, go to hue saturation if you want to color, or color lookup, and maybe apply color lookup to create some interesting color designs with that. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.